<clears throat> okay, today we're going to do some dry canning, which is vacuum seal canning. So <clears throat> right now I'm doing flour, but this process uh, applies whether you're doing uh, flour, uh, cornmeal, potato flakes, you know, uh, rice, any dry, it, it, the process is the same for uh for what we're doing here so i'm just going to do flour today but if i were doing cornmeal it'd be the same process so uh this is flour and i keep it in the freezer about three days prior to doing this and uh for those of you that don't know why i'll tell you put it in the freezer for about three days so that uh, you can kill any weevil eggs or bug larvae that may or may not be there so that kills that. So you start, you know, by doing that. And then you, I, I take it out, put it in a bowl so I can return it to room temperature, which is what I've done here. So I didn't let you, you didn't need to watch me dump it out of the bag in the bowl. Well, it wasn't necessary. But uh, <clears throat> so put it in a bowl, let it return to room temperature, which we've done. All of the jars and lids have been washed thoroughly. And then I put them in the oven for uh, 230 degrees for one hour to sanitize them. And uh, so the lids and jars and nothing, I got these out to let them cool down just a little bit because they were hot. Let them cool down so we can get started. So we are going to get started. Right now we're gonna, we're doing flour, like I said. So these are quart jars and the ones I have right now just just because they're wide mouth it's just what I, I got you could use wide mouth or the regular mouth either one doesn't matter <clears throat> so I like to kind of tamp them down just a little bit I mean just to, to settle so I can settle the product. So, don't want any air gaps in the middle of the jar, so I tamp them a little bit. I got my first class 50 year, 50 year term helper beside me here. Say hello, Nanny. Hi. <coughs> want about one inch of headspace and on these uh, canning funnels if you don't know this is one inch right here so you can either measure it or just use the the funnel to gauge it but you want about one inch of headspace and I think that's gonna get us there I'm watching it down here Got about one, one inch of headspace here. <clears throat> now, I like to put, this is a, uh, a muffin pan liner. You know, they're just paper, dollar and something. You get 40, 50 of them in a bag. They're great because you want to put something in here. A coffee filter, these work good. You want to kind of block the uh, powder. You don't want it to get sucked up into the, this edge where the lid is. So you want to put something in here, a cloth, coffee filter. Uh, I'm using these uh, muffin pan liners. They work really good. <clears throat> Nanny, you got me a... <clears throat> now, no, not yet, not yet. <clears throat> what I got here now, this is a, just a paper towel, just barely damp with vinegar. I'm just going to use this to wipe off the rim, just to make sure the rim is perfectly clean. You don't want the paper to touch anything, the paper from this liner. Let me mash that down just a little bit. Wipe it off. This is uh, just regular white uh, vinegar. <clears throat> Wipe it off there. This is the lid you want me to use? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to also take, just wipe off the sealing edge with the vinegar. Let me dry it just a little bit. <clears throat> and then let's put that on there. Get that thing lined up. 
<clears throat> now these are, oh, where's my, hang on, I've got something very important. Forgot the very, very important food saver jar vacuum contraption. Put that on there. This is a food saver vacuum pump, which sits right here. So you want to get that over the centered over the hole, and then you'll hear the the sound change when it when it vacuums down and loads up. Now, you should hear this. You hear that vacuum release? <clears throat> so whenever it loads up with vacuum, you, you hear the motor start to bog down. And then you should just be able to uh, pull this lid off. So let's pull it off of there. And now this is the test. You just grab just the rim and lift it. And don't don't hold it over the floor. If it lets go, you're going to bust glass and mess all over the world. Just, just take the, hold it by the edge of the lid, the metal lid, and you're just checking and it is perfectly sealed and then also you should feel a slight concave right there uh, band and then you put your band on and that one's done and my super duper helper here has got labels I've already printed so she's gonna put a label on it <clears throat> best helper ever of course I've had to uh, had to spend 50 years training her. Ha ha ha. <laughs> also, just while I'm filling this, let me tell you something. When you take this stuff out of the freezer, whether it's in a cardboard box or bag, one thing you need to keep in mind that condensation may or may not form inside the bag while it's returning to room temperature. So you need to be ready to deal with that. That's one of the reasons I will take it out of the bag immediately, put it in a large bowl because of the potential of condensation, which I don't want condensation on the inside of the bag. Bag or box, whatever your, uh, your product came in. <clears throat> Because obviously dry goods and moisture don't play nice together. Perfect. Put my paper liner in here. Like I said, you could use coffee filter if you want, or cut some little squares of cotton cloth. I try to use something that does not have any printing on it because I don't want the ink involved in it. Can you get me another lid? Please. please, please give me another lid, super duper helper. I try to use warm lids. Uh, you know, they should be warm enough that you can hold them. If they're too hot to hold, then uh, probably too hot to do this. Now, if you're canning in a canner, that's a different story. But for this process, you want your lids to be be pretty warm. Try to line that up with that circle right there.
Now you should hear it release when I move this. You hear that suction? That tells you you got a good vacuum seal on it. And that does that. So we'll take this off. Test it. Got a good seal. I'm towing it just by the lid only. Pass that to the label putter on her. This, this is a food saver device. It's just a handheld vacuum pump. You can do bags with it, do this with it, you can do a lot of different things with it, but I'm I'm using these to uh, vacuum seal these jars. We're great for this process right here. Some of these, uh, you'll see that some of these, these are also food saver. They're for this purpose. You see that little ring, that little ring right there matches this ring right here. So you put that in there and suck it down. So, I put this down here just so I wasn't, didn't have glass on tile, but also a little color contrast. But uh, I'm not going to film or videotape doing all 30 jars. I just want to do at least two of them so you can see what's going on when we do vacuum sealing dry goods and canning jars. Put labels on that. I date date the labels, date date the product was purchased, date it was vacuum sealed, put it in the cupboard. I'd say you're good for at least 20 years. Now, you know, that's up to you how long you want to save them, but uh, I, I plan, I, I put on my labels, what I put on there is a consume date. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it, it'll say uh, uh, consume and replace by a certain date. In this case, I put uh, 2028. So uh, that's it. That's the process. So uh, hope you got some benefit out of that. If not, sucks to be you. <laughs> God bless. Have a safe day.